In this episode, we'll be talking about finding the right strategy to build a sustainable customer-centric culture. We'll talk about how do you choose the service design projects you should be working on that make the most impact. And finally, what is needed to align the whole organization around one customer journey. Here's the guest for this episode. Let the show begin. Hi, this is Priscilla Williams and welcome to the Service Design Show. Hi, I'm Mark and welcome to the Service Design Show. This show is all about helping you do more work that makes you proud by designing and delivering services that have a positive impact on people and are good for business. My guest in this episode is Priscilla Williams. Priscilla studied service design at the Politecnico di Milano and since then has gained a lot of experience introducing service design and design thinking to fintech startups. She's also super active in the Mexico, Mexico City service design community, organizing the service design jams, the drinks, and also being part of the Mexico Service Design Network chapter. So this episode with Priscilla is really about how do you move from doing one of service design projects to really building a customer slash human centered culture and organization where everybody is working to fulfill the customer needs. If this is your first time here on this channel, welcome. And don't forget to subscribe because I bring a new video that helps to level up your service design skills at least once a week. Also, make sure you click that bell icon to be notified when these new videos come out. So that's it for the introduction. And now let's quickly jump into the interview with Priscilla. Welcome to the show, Priscilla. Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm good. You have lovely sunny weather there in Mexico. We have a little bit of gray day here in the Utrecht. <laughs> yes, the weather here is amazing. Uh, what yeah, for I the say? people who are listening to the podcast, you need to check the video. It's uh, yeah, it's it's jealous making. Priscilla, <laughs> for the people who don't know you, who you are, we've been in touch for quite some time, but um, maybe not everybody knows you. Could you give like a thirty-second introduction? Okay, perfect. Um, I studied service design like ten years ago. After that, I studied strategic design and management at Parsons. Now I'm helping uh, financial institutions to have a better service design to improve their customer experience, and basically that's it. I'm also working a lot to uh, make the community, the service design community here in Mexico, stronger. So we, um, I organize the service design drinks with my friend Adriana Ojeda, and we organize the service design jam. Blah blah blah. <laughs> You're quite active in the service design community. That's that's awesome. Helping to exactly. grow, grow and and uh, facilitate the community. Priscilla, you, you said you studied service design in uh, Milan, um, but do you actually remember the very first time you heard about the term service design? Yes, actually, was there when I was in Italy. Um, I had to choose a class that was in English because at the time I didn't speak any Italian and service design was the only class that was in English. So, so that's why I chose it randomly. And it's a happy coincidence because that's what I do. Uh, but it was a really interesting class that changed my mindset totally. I studied uh, product design initially and um, it showed me more about service blueprints and the customer experience and journey maps and a lot of uh, methodologies and thinking actually that was really interesting. And since that class, I knew that that's what I wanted to work. <laughs> <laughs> that's an amazing story. I haven't heard this story yet. Like you stumbled upon service design just because the course was in English. <laughs> How cool exactly, is that? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I mean, like studying uh, product design uh -huh. and UX and everything, you know, like you have the same uh, mindset or the same thinking yeah. where you have to study your user, your user, and then, you know, like you have to, to understand what he wants, what he needs, etc. But, you know, you, you have to apply it in a different manner. And I think that a service design is a really holistic way of um, applying all of that thinking. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we yeah. share and borrow a lot from other disciplines as well. Exactly, Priscilla, yes. you gave me three really interesting startups because you have a quite an interesting background and your work history is quite interesting. 
I think a lot of people will enjoy this episode. So are you ready to start with doing some interview jazz? Yes. Okay. All right. Let's, let's see how it goes. Let's do it. <laughs> now, the first topic will be, let's see, I've got it over here. Uh, three words that aren't really service design-ish. Change management strategy. Do you have a question starter that goes along with this one? Yeah. Uh, how can we develop a change uh, management strategy to make the organization more customer centric and more design service design centric? Hmm. Well, how do we do that? And what what um, do you mean with a customer now with a change management strategy? What is your? I, I don't. I don't even know if that makes sense in English. It does in Spanish. Um, however, uh, in my last job, I was working a lot uh, to change, to switch the mindset, and to to make all the collaborators collaborators in the company more customer centric, and also to think in terms of service design. So for that, um, I, I study a lot of what Boston Consulting was saying, McKinsey was saying, Bain was saying, and basically all of them are talking about four different axes of action. So they are talking about um, giving education to the, the people, um, implementing uh, leadership, um, methodologies to say that um to to communicate all the things that you want and also what's the other one i'm a little bit you're, lost yeah uh, yeah you'll remember it or are you do you have a cheat note <laughs> <laughs> no to some processes all right so we have yeah. to thought about all of these four and to see what, how we could um use these four axes of action to create that mindset but also in terms of service design we need to thought about experiences so we add a five uh, acts of action and in that uh, fifth uh, acts of action we thought about employee experience and uh, to make the customer experience better. Because we thought that if we make everything easier for the employees, then that will affect how they interact with their customers. And mm -hmm. also if we make their life easier, well, the, the life of the customers will be easier too. So those were the five pillars that we were uh, thinking on. And also we thought about like, how can we make this change management? So the first phase was to make an assessment of how the organization was thinking in terms of uh, customer centricity. I, I'm uh, going to interrupt you for design. a moment because I'm really uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. interested. You, you were talking about we did this, we did this assessment. Who is we? Did you have a customer experience team, a service design team? Yeah, we had a small team. It was um, four people and we were, well, in the organization, there was like um, maybe a seven people team just thinking about customer experience uh, strategy fully. And I was the leader of the change management project, but we were four people working on it. So we were like, each one of us were working a different um, axis of action. Some of them were thinking fully of how can we improve the employee experience. Some of them were thinking about how uh, improving the customer experience fully. And I was thinking about how can we make this whole strategy, a, a whole thing, and change the whole the whole organization. Mm. Okay, so you did the assessment, and then what did you do after that? Uh, well, that was that's the part where we are working on right now. Where we were working on uh, for making the assessment, we did a survey and we sent it to all the employees to know uh, how, how if they felt that they have the autonomy to take decisions to satisfy the customer. Uh, we ask them if they know design thinking methodologies to, you know, to to make their projects projects with this human centered design mindset. And we also ask them uh, how do they think what do they need to change to be more customer centric mm -hmm, basically mm -hmm. so we send it to all the the bank employees and you know like we have different areas such as legal compliance it's uh, branches etc et but we send them to all to see how each area was and what strategy did we need to make in in order to to make that area better so after doing that um, survey the next step was going to be um, making a workshop with the top management 
to also see their perspective perspective of how their area was and after that assessment we were gonna you know like to cross the information from the survey and also the information from the workshop to see what strategies should we do and what changes should we make in order to make each area of the bank better and to give the tools that each area needed because for example maybe the area of business development was already work working with uh, design thinking methodology so they knew exactly how to put the, the client in the center but maybe the ones that were working in the legal area weren't working with legal design a legal design man, mindset you know and they are making these huge contracts that no one reads and no one understands so we wanted to change all of these little things in each area and um one of the challenges that i often see when you usually we as service designers see sort of the bigger picture we understand that it's about culture, it's about employee experience, it's about new KPIs, but usually it's really hard to actually change something because, for instance, with your example of legal, we don't have the mandate over that team. We don't have the, yeah, the resources and possibilities to actually change something in that department, in the marketing department, in the IT department. Did you experience the same challenges? <laughs> Uh, yes, we experienced that, um, and that's why we decided that having all of them working in those workshops with us were going to help us to make the buy-in from them. And also, um, I think that what helped us the most was the top management was already um, already in on board mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. they were on board with us and they knew that this was a priority to make uh, best customer experiences and that's something that we as a whole organization must do together otherwise there's no um, cohesion or there's no omni channel strategy there's nothing so we knew that that was something that we had to do together and of course there were challenges because not all of them understand it as well but I think that when they understood what was what we wanted to achieve, they they wanted to participate on that and they wanted to be part of offering best customer experiences. Yeah. So so the key, and we uh, we won't talk about this right now. But the key is that you got top level, senior level uh, buy in, and it was basically an assignment from them, or they. Uh, to, to do yes, this, right? Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. I think that the two key factors is to have the top management buy-in, but also to to co collaborate with everyone and include everyone in everything that we are, we're doing because that way they knew what we were doing. They were like, we created momentum uh, mm. among mm. them and they were all excited and they were all uh, willing to be part of this, um, this change, yeah. this transformation. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Super interesting. Um, so let's move on into the second question and I've got it over here. Uh, drum roll, please. Again, not a really designerish uh, topic from the first thing. Choose and prioritize. Do you have a question starter? Choose yes. and prioritize. Let's what? Hmm. Why? Uh, why it's important to choose and pri prioritize our projects to have uh, the best customer experience that we can offer. Hmm. Okay, so why is that important? And I will immediately ask, how do we choose and prioritize? <laughs> so maybe you can ask, answer these two questions. Yeah, well, it's very important for us to understand which uh, which battles do we want to fight because not every fight has a direct impact on the customer experience or the employee experience. So we have to understand what are these... Um, we have to, to identify which criteria should we follow to identify those important uh, projects that we want to work on. Maybe the first one could be an, a direct impact on the NPS. Maybe another one could be um, the volumetry of the, 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 the claims that we're having in certain uh, certain product or certain service. Maybe another one could be um, the volumetry of the products that the clients have. So that all of that give us hints of what 
are the most impactful projects. And understanding those aspects uh, will help us to, pre pre to choose the projects that we want to work on. And for that, we have to to have really clear, clear in our minds what we want to improve. Mm. So mm -hmm. once that we have uh, understand which projects should, should we work on, uh, what we used to do is uh, to put like certain score. Yeah, I yeah. Don't know yeah, 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 like yeah. We ha like if it's gonna increase our MPAS, then maybe our score for that is gonna be five. If it's gonna decrease our claims, maybe for that is uh, a a uh, score of three. So we used to put like little, um, like little scores in all our projects, and then that way we used to prioritize. But then also after having that score, we used to discuss them a lot to be clear that that was a project that we wanted to work on, and to be sure that. The, that was going to make a, a true change in our customer experience or even in our service because there are so many aspects that we have to work on in, while we are trying to to make our service better that if we try to solve every little thing we might get lost in our in the way so we have to be really strategic about which projects or with which aspects are urgent, which aspects are important, and which uh, aspects will make our experience memorable or a great experience. So, so who was giving you these? Uh, let's call them KPIs. Who was who was saying, okay, if you focus on M or we want to improve the MPS, or we need to improve the you know, the lower the number of uh, complaints? Where did you get those? KPIs from because I think that is super important. Well, um, actually, like we were talking a lot with the business to know where what were their. The, first, we need to understand what's the strategy of the business. Yeah. Because yeah. we need to push towards the same direction, otherwise, no one is gonna hear hear what we're saying so we have to be really aligned with them but also we we were like talking with a lot of different people to understand what were their their worries you know for example maybe that in the business the the aspect of decreasing the claims is not a a priority but then if we talk with the, get the guy that was leading all the, the claims department we saw that that was something to worry about so we were talking with a lot of people to have a whole perspective of what was happening in the business and in the service and everything to see which aspects we couldn't uh, lose sight and um yeah. Like after we chose that, we were talking with the top management also to make sure that our decisions were right. And I, we weren't like. Yeah, I think this is so this is so crucial what you're telling here. And I think uh, uh, I see this is a huge uh, challenge for a lot of service designers is that we don't get to have these conversations with the business or we forget to have these conversations with the business. Like, and you're telling like from the start you need we you were talking to the people in order to be in line with the business and it makes so much sense but i'm not sure why it, it is it is hard who who maybe you can maybe you can be even more specific who in the business were you talking to like team leaders senior managers which positions did the do these people have in your experience okay. Okay, the bank has a really complex structure, but we wanted to make sure to talk, to always talk with the head of certain area. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we always talk with the people of the business development area because they knew all the information about the products. We always talk about also with the people of the call center because also they have a lot of uh, knowledge of the customers and what they're talking about and what are the customer worries. We were also always talking with the guys that were leading the claims department because they also know what is wearing the clients uh, we were also always um, talking with uh, the engineering people to know which processes were like making things difficult um, we were also talking about 
talking with um, the people of uh, human resources to understand what are the employees uh, talking about and what are their worries. So if like my point is that we try to talk with a lot of different people to have a really holistic point of view, because sometimes if we only have one part of the information, we can get lost in that part of the information, or we we like we are side blinded. Yeah. So yeah. we wanted to have as much information as possible. Sometimes it can be difficult because we can get lost in the information, but we wanted to have a really uh, holistic perspective to be sure of what information should we choose. To decide, so yeah, I don't know if I. Yeah, yeah it makes makes a lot of sense, and I think this is again. I'm going to stress that this is so important for any service design. Make sure I, w- I would summarize this like: make sure you talk to people who are who are responsible for profits and losses, like the people who spend exactly. money and the people who earn money. That's basically it. You need to talk to those people, and. Uh, these are the people that at the end of each quarter sort of need to yes. show results. Talk to them. One final question regarding uh, this topic, and that is, uh, so now you were able to choose and prioritize. Um, were you also in the position that you had to make, I don't know, assumptions or business cases up front? So were people asking you, okay, if this is going to impact MPS, how much will it impact MPS? Or if this is going to lower the number of claims, how much? Or did it, or were you saved from these discussions? Yes. Well, when you're working in a bank, the business case is always important because they're always paying attention to the money. And yeah. I think that that's something that is uh, transversal to all of industries, maybe. Um, so, yes, we were always talking about making a business case. And sometimes it's difficult because it's just some random projections, projections that you should make to see how the NPS will be uh, improved or how much how much it's going to cost to improve that NPS. So... I did. I wasn't making them myself. It's not my expertise. I was more designing the experience or choosing the right projects to improve that experience. And I wasn't paying a lot of attention to the business case. But I, I know that is something that that was really important to make my point clear. Yeah. Uh, and also to make my point matter to the people that were making decisions. Because as you mentioned before, like the people that are uh, deciding, uh, well, that are like. Like everyone is counting the money, you know, like the profits and the losses. So um, it's important to talk their language to be taken into account. Uh, yeah, absolutely agree. Um, Priscilla, let's move on to topic number three. I'm just sort of rushing through this because you have so many interesting things to say. Uh, we're moving from choose and prioritize into something that we might already know. Journey centric, not, uh, not customer centric. Not human-centric, not people-centric, but journey-centric. Okay, yeah. uh, Just pick one, improvise, let's see what happens. (laughs) How can we make a journey-centric strategy? Okay. So, so basically... Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, basically, uh, my last project in the bank was actually choosing these journeys that were really important and we should focus on. So we wanted to shift uh, in a, instead of making projects, we wanted to follow up some journeys to make sure that those journeys were the, the to, to make sure that those journeys were uh, giving good experiences. So we try to understand which journeys were critical to our customers. Uh, we also say, use the same criteria that I m- might uh, have said before, uh, journeys that were um, that were impactful in our MPS, that maybe had a really bad MPS, or journeys that were like um, products that were high, that a lot of our clients had, or maybe... Uh, journeys that were having a lot of claims. So we were trying to understand which journeys were the most important and our objective was to choose more or less 10 and to be working on them 
for a full year to improve the experience. So a lot of teams in UX already use this methodology of choosing like some journeys and be working on them and make some releases on these journeys. But the idea was like to understand deeply these journeys, to understand which uh, touch points we're interacting with our clients within these uh, touch points and start making uh, pr uh, projects uh, yeah, in, in yeah. within those journeys. Yeah, yeah. So the idea was to choose the most, the ten most important journeys, and then make the experience on those journeys incredible. So our clients could say, like, "Ah, this bank is amazing." Mm. <clears throat> One of the questions that I have is, um, I'm thinking a lot about journeys these days, um, and one of the questions I hear often is, "How do you get?" people from the organization involved that aren't necessarily uh, in touch with the customer on a daily basis. So uh, let's say the people uh, on the backstage, the engineers, the, the people from the legal department already, th usually they are critical in actually delivering the experience. Yeah. But it's really hard from my experience and also from what I've been hearing to get them actually on board. Again, have you found the same is it challenging and if so how were you able to get them on board yeah i think that i was really lucky and i was working in an organization that was like uh really that already had this mindset so there like maybe like there weren't so much challenges as in some other organizations that I have worked with but to be honest I think that the key is also to include them since the beginning and to know them that they are a crucial part of the process so like I think that um, they have be they have to develop this journey well with the service design team that leads the like leads the journey development and um also, like it's important to communicate to them the trust, the the importance that they play in each part of the journey. And what I like the most is to put real clients to talk with them, so they can understand how how their their activities are keys on that journey. Sometimes a lot of, a lot of the time, actually, people think that they know their client, but they don't. So when you put like clients to talk with them they change their best perspective and they understand that they are doing things wrong and mm. they need to change mm. i think that that has worked a lot uh, to me like yeah. i always yeah. Yeah. like i always at least try to make a little bit bit videos uh to summarize what people are saying so they like i can present to them if, if um, I mm -hmm. am not mm -hmm. able to make them talk with them directly, but after putting like them to hear the client, they understand that maybe signing this contract that they don't understand is painful and they have to change it or redesign it. So um, we also did a lot of workshops to work together because that that way we can break silos and make people talk among the, with each other, and that also helps because they understand like the whole perspective and not only the little activity that. that that they are doing in one action of the client. Yeah, so that yeah. was also something that worked. Yeah, uh, I think that's a really good tip. Like if you get people that aren't usually interacting with the customers to interact with the customer, they usually sort of open up and start to see the value of, of this work. I, I, yeah, I totally agree. We found the same. Um, so another question in regards to these journeys and a journey centric strategy. Um, and I'm not sure if you have any experience with this, but creating a journey, mapping a journey for the first time isn't really that hard. What is hard is updating it uh, and keeping it alive and using it as a dashboard. Were you also in the stage where sort of people were owning the journey and had to update it or how, how did that work for you? Yeah, the idea was to develop these journeys and have a KPI for each action of the client or or each interaction or even each touch point. So like we were uh, creating these Excel sheets with each action and having a KPA for all of these actions to keep them alive and measure them each month. All right. So if you, if you like, I think that the tough part of that is that you have to to 
to design those KPIs that sometimes can be really tricky. Yeah. But if you choose them correctly, you can like follow them and update them and start seeing which part of your design isn't working as you thought it would work at the beginning and see which parts are critical to the So who, who was responsible for updating these journeys every month? Because that's really interesting. Well, we hadn't gone to that part uh -huh, yet. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But I think like the, the the way that we were thinking about it is to have like someone, especially uh, from the analytic, uh, it's like something someone with the analytic profile with an analytic profile that know about numbers and know about how it's impacting the NPS and whatever, and like the whole the whole activity of this person would be like tracking these improvements and how the journeys are behaving with the new improvements that we work on. Yeah, make. exactly. And because, me you know, my saying that I really like is what gets measured gets done. And as soon exactly. as you start measuring yeah. stuff, no matter if it's, it's maybe even the, the, not the right things that you should be measuring, but at least people will start to focus energy on that. So as long as we are not exactly. measuring something in service design, I think it's really hard to actually build that momentum. Yes, exactly. And also I think that measuring it helps us to communicate with other parts of the business that can understand and relate more with KPIs. Mm, you know, mm. like sometimes like we understand it really easily, but people don't. And that way we have like a language in common yeah. we can talk about and yeah. focus on the right right um, parts of mm. the journey. Mm. Now, Priscilla, you've been answering a lot of my questions, our questions, mm -hmm. uh, but is there something that you'd like to ask us, the viewers and the listeners of the show? Yes, well, I would love to know what people are doing in their organizations in terms of, of shifting their mindset, because I think that that can be tricky and difficult. So I would love to hear what you guys are experiencing and doing in order to make your organization more service design centric. And that's it. That would be awesome. How are we brainwashing organizations? Basically, that's exactly. the... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly, yeah, yes. Yeah, it is. So it, it, sometimes it feels like brainwashing or evangelizing. Uh, yeah, exactly, evangelizing, yeah. Mm. Okay, let, let us know down below in the comments. People are usually, uh, people are starting really to comment on these videos. So I hope, uh, or on the podcast, if you're listening to the podcast, be sure to, to let us know. Um, Priscilla, thanks so much for making the time and sharing what's on your mind. I think you have a really Thank interesting you. background, like I said, with the experience in the financial scene. Um, really, the, the, let's say the hard business uh, perspective <laughs> on service design. I think that's super valuable. So once again, thanks for making the time and sharing uh, what's on your mind. Thank you, Mark, for having me. And thank you all for hearing me, although my terrible English. I hope that this... Uh, it's useful to everyone. Thanks. <laughs> Ciao. So what is your way to brainwash organizations into becoming more human and customer-centered? Share your tips and tricks experiences down below in the comments. And if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to share it with somebody who might enjoy it as well. You are helping the channel to grow that way and you're making somebody else happy so thanks again for watching and i look forward to seeing you in the next video